Hello there, Mary Matt here. It's only been three years since I last biked a very long distance in the beaches of South Florida. I biked a total of 41.77 miles, which is a pretty long distance, and all I took was about 2 hours and 40 minutes. And better yet, you have a bunch of statistics and data that GPS systems gather for you. And remember that it only takes three satellites for GPS systems to gather your exact position on the globe. So over here, let's just appreciate how beautiful this shape is, which is created or generated by the path. Strava is an application that anybody can download for free. And what it will do for you is that it will record all of this very important data, especially if you're um, a sportsman and you would like to improve your running and your pace. So in my case, I used to be a biker. Uh, and over here, it tells you the average speed of your whole uh, cycle. It tells you the max and probably the min. You just have to go a little deeper. And of course, uh, it will show you a lot more information because this global positioning system does not just show you, you know, about how many calories you burn. This is all calculated. Okay, for you. So over here we have an example of a speed over position graph. And this can, of course, be obtained from a GPX file. Uh, and if you are curious, I actually did some analysis. And if you have a Jupyter notebook, which is uh, a package from Anaconda Python, what you could do is you could plot all these data, or maybe just a few points, just like I did. I just took a few points from uh, the GPX file, and um, I plotted some of those points uh, over here, as you can see, you have the speed over position graph. What you could do is you could do, you know, some interpolation. Maybe uh, you could uh, find a function that could fit this uh, set of points, and then you could uh, find the respective, uh, you know, derivatives. Maybe you want to find how fast uh, your speed is changing, or maybe uh, your position. If you're curious. Um, I actually did a curve fitting for some of my data, but it's not that great. You know, I still have to improve my statistics skills. So whenever you're driving your car and you come across a speed limit, you want to make sure that you don't go past that speed limit. Otherwise, you're going to have a ticket, right? And the same thing happens when there is a, a speedometer. And a speedometer is, you know, what, what the name states it. It measures how fast you're going at a specific instant of time. Now that's a keyword, right? Because that instant of time is going to be related to the speed of the car that you're driving. So in that case, it's going to be called, uh, you know, like it's generally called instantaneous speed. But when I talk about instantaneous speed, I, I don't mean that it's, you know, exactly at that point in time. You know, it might be counterintuitive to say that instantaneous is a bad word you know to describe um, derivatives in this case that will be a very um, you know good um, description of the derivative okay but I'm going to show you what I mean by that well all of this has to do with rates of change and in calculus rates of change are one of the most important uh, concepts and that is because um, Isaac Newton, when he invented calculus at age 26, brought the pillars of calculus by talking about limits and derivatives. So right here we have a, a graph, uh, which is commonly known as the Gaussian function. Okay, it just has some parameters over here that I just uh, added for convenience. And uh, what I'm going to do is basically, okay, take two points of the graph. These two points on the graph, okay, are going to be crossed by a line. But that line is called the secant line. And that's precisely because it's going to cross two points on the graph that I have assigned. Well, realistically, it's, cr it's crossing three points. But it's still a secant line, okay, on this domain, right? Let's call the domain from minus five to five. So we could even, we could even um, restrict the domain from minus five to five. You know, we could do that, so we could do minus 5 okay is less than x less than 5 okay we could definitely do that there's no problem now what I want to do is I want to show you what it means by 
average okay change average rate of change and instantaneous rate of change two very key parts of differential calculus so over here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep one of these points constant this point over here is going to remain still and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this point to the right and I'm gonna bring it closer and closer to the other point so as you can see it's still a secant line it just crosses two points on this Gaussian function but then what happens is as I get it closer and closer to the other point I'm going to reach something called a point of tangency and that point of tangency is essentially what the word states it it's a tangent line right and a tangent line is characterized by uh, a line that crosses the um, graph at only one point but I mean realistically okay if you really think about it if you don't let yourself uh, be fooled by somebody else like me um, you're going to find out that it's not necessarily one point that it's going to touch if you zoom in actually you're going to see that it's still two points and so this is what I mean by okay uh, instantaneous might not be the best word to describe tangency Okay, because it's never going to be one single point. In reality, it's just infinitesimally close to being one point. So what we could do is we could we could assign this change, okay, the difference in the x direction between the two points is going to be h. If I make h is extremely small, right, both points are going to come together much closer. Okay? And so if I keep doing that, if I make h extremely small, okay, you're going to see that the slope is going to reach um, a pretty much stable uh, point that it's actually going to be much closer to the actual derivative. And so, my dear friends, my dear fellow mathematicians, this is, a, is the definition of the derivative, okay? The derivative is basically, okay, an instantaneous rate of change okay over an infinitesimally small interval of time you know of uh, space you could call, call it whatever you want it doesn't matter in what sort of application it's going to appear calculus is everywhere so if you want to look at the specifics the formula or the equation for the derivative where m is the slope is f of a plus h minus f of a over h okay and this is basically describing Okay, the slope between both points as h goes very close to zero. Okay, and uh, yeah, so calculus is actually not just in physics, you know, because you tend to think about uh, calculus as, uh, you know, and rates of change as velocity or maybe position, acceleration, etc. But it can be found ev everywhere, you know, everywhere in your life, calculus is present. Even in your own bodies, if you think about it, the ways in which your bodies work depend on mathematical uh, equations and formulas that are already there, like working for you, like it's automatic. The universe just is the way it is, you know? And so um, if you think about how fast you age, you know, that's a way to think about rates of change, how fast you eat or how fast you get A's or you increase your GPA uh, in school. So calculus is um, probably one of the most uh, important inventions of mankind and it will be for a very very long time. So I hope you liked the video, um, please subscribe, comment down below and uh, thanks for watching.